Hi, this is the uh, the third. My pen working. This is the third follow-up slide. You know this is C, but I, I, I I'm going to give you a bonus. There's going to be two parts to this one, and it's thoughts on fill rate economics. And most people I don't think have thought very deeply about this. Um, and uh, test yourself to see if if your concept of how you do fill rates and measure them and think about them internally meets uh, all these uh, these thoughts. First of all, we've, I've explained why fill, rate, fill rates are foundational as far as service value. If we don't have what they want, the great people, zero errors, all that stuff is is doesn't make you know it doesn't hold water. It's like a Marx Brothers joke where uh, Groucho is running a, a duck soup. I think he's running a store and somebody beefs about beefs, uh, complains about the fact that he's charging a dollar for the chicken. And he said, well, you can get it somewhere for less. And she said, yes, down the street, they charge 60 cents. And he said, well, why don't you buy it there? And she said, well, they don't have chickens today. He said, well, the next time I don't have any chickens, I'll sell it to you for 40 cents. So we've got to have it. Um, then when we say, well, how do we how do we program fill rates? Oh, our fill rates are based on picks. You know, if it has 12 or more picks or 48 picks or whatever, it's an A-plus item, and we have 92% or 95%. I said, well, how do you really know? Well, we don't. I mean, it's it's in the computer, supposedly. So nobody really is bothered to check, and everybody assumes that if it, it's in there, it's in there. And if they get daily reports, they'd say, here's our daily report on fill rates. And I said, well, how do you know they're not overstated? They said, well, what do you mean? Well, customers might call up and say, okay, I'm calling, and do you have uh, this goofy item? And you might say, well, no, we don't have the goofy item. And they'd say, all right, well, then I'm going somewhere else. Ideally, we would say, no, no, wait, wait, wait. If we had that, what would you have ordered? Oh, I would have ordered that and four other items. And But I'm now taking all that somewhere else to meet freight or minimum or something like that. So if they're a good customer, ideally, we would want to put the demand into the computer for those items to reflect the fact that they'd come back in the future and we'd like to have them. But we lost that history. Um, and, and, and also we lost, you know, we, we didn't have the item, so we didn't enter it as a lost item. It, 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 our fill rates were perfect because we didn't bother to say we lost the order. We may say to a customer, no, I don't have it, but I have a clone. So, you know, we have four manufacturers. They all make uh, different items, but they all make vanilla. And you, we don't have vanilla in the brand you want, so we can sell you vanilla in another brand. It's substitutable. And they say, fine. So we fill it with that item. But guess what? We don't put the demand with the original brand. It just automatically goes to what's picked. So we're taking the number one brand demand um, and sharing it out of over the other commodity lines, redundant lines we may have, making them look like they're viable and people want to buy them. And in fact, the computer over time says buy more of brand two because look at the demand we're getting, buy less of brand one because it's not in stock. So that sort of evens out demand on redundant items, and uh, which maybe isn't the best thing for, for any of us in the channel. Uh, we could say, well, look, I don't have all of what you want, but I can get some of the stuff from some from another location. So we'll split the shipment. We'll create two sets of paperwork costs for you and two t sets of activity costs for us, as opposed to just having it here. But when the other branch ships it, the other branch should not show demand for that item because it's not supporting their local customer base. The demand should go at our place, and they should just re reduce the inventory they have. But if we don't do that, they start buying more and more stuff at the other branch, and we buy less and less at ours, so the computer gets stupider and stupider. We're not getting smarter and smarter. Um, if we say, all right, look, you want 10. We have eight. Can we ship eight as complete? Then that suggests that we have fill rates, as opposed to when the the customer needs statistic, they're going to need the other two items, and it may just generate more picks annually and therefore more activity cost, um, but it also sort of overstates our fill rates. So how do both sides of the fence benefit economically from higher fill rates? That's the next slide. Thank you.